Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God, for the days that we are living in right now. We praise your holy name, Father. We thank you for every prayer that we see answered. But we also praise you, Father God, for our King Jesus has told us, blessed is he who believes and has not seen. We thank you, Father God, for the portion of faith that you have given each one of us as we are marching forward into the depths of the difficult times known as the period of sorrows. Lord Jesus, we praise you for every word that you gave in your um, private discourse at the Olivet, at the Olivet discourse of the of the things that we have to to mark off as we see the the world essentially being jettisoned into a period of darkness that such as never that we have never seen. Uh, probably a period of darkness that is greater on a global level than has ever occurred since before the foundations of the earth. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will outpour in and, and, and a double portion a double portion of your faith, a double portion of your trust. Father, if it isn't for the, the very essence of, the, of, of Christ in us, we would not be able to even have that, the, the necessary ingredients. The, 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 we would not be sanctified in our walk enough to be able to, to receive the outpouring of your spirit upon us, that we would be able to exhibit that trust, that we'd be able to even sense the things that you are sharing with us in our walk as we see you speak to us and supernaturally sense those things around about us. Father God, we pray that we will draw in closer, that we will feel your presence, that we will be able to hear your still small voice at all times. We pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that Isaiah 31 will be bound to each one of us. In Jesus' name, that we will all hear that voice in our ear behind us saying, this is the way walk in it, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will place a spirit of discernment upon each of us, Father God, and also a spirit of Nepha, which is the Greek word for being sober-minded. A calmness, even as the days grow even ever so much more bumpy, and realize that we that we are in a, living in a time right now when the wars in the heavens are at an all-time peak, when things are happening across the world in a way that we, we cannot keep our, our we just can't keep track of it all. And we pray in the name of Jesus that we will not be uh, distracted by the things of our countries individually, but we will be able to keep our hearts and minds with a mindset of the throne room and be able to see the things that are happening on a global level so that we can keep our eyes, our hearts, our minds stayed upon the things that are happening and be able to map them back to your holy word, to be able to look past the discrepancies and the disparity that is coming from your servants, the prophets, Father, at this time. And we praise you, Father, for releasing this uh, to our attention, the Stanley Frodgen prophecy in 19, I believe it's 61, to understand that the seduce, seduce, we are living in a time that the seducing spirits are released upon the earth. And, and yes, there is great disparity between the prophecies that are out there. But yet at the same time, Father God, if we just keep our minds and our hearts stayed upon you, if we listen as carefully as we can, if we continue to dwell upon in your word, understanding that, you'll, that your word is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing under the division of soul and spirit, bone and marrow. It is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart to help us to understand it, but just by virtue of reading your word, that it amplifies, it it, it, it increases the, the anointing of the Lord, of the spirit of Lord Jesus Christ within us and changes us and has the ability indeed, I believe, with all of my heart to change in our, our DNA. We plead the blood of Jesus upon the golden door of our DNA strand, and we, we call down the holy fire of God to burn and weld shut the black door of our DNA in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father God, for giving us that revelation, Lord Jesus, for coming upon that 16-year-old girl in Africa to help us understand that highly complex uh, dynamic associated with our DNA. We plead that blood, Lord Jesus. We plead your blood upon that golden door that with you. That that that, that golden that 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 your uh, that your uh, blood will just sanctify us even further. That our walk will be stayed upon you in every manner. That we will just grow in closer. That we when we say Ani Lodori Vidori Li, when we pray to you and we say I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. That that we are able to say that in a personal way. That we're able to call you by the name that means the the, the most to us. That our our chain our our walk with you becomes ever so much more personal that we really become a reality that it becomes a total reality that we utterly and totally fall in love with you let us not just give you lip service in that regard let us truly truly fall in love with you lord jesus we pray in the name of jesus in your name in your name hallelujah yeshua messiah 
that you will become ever so much closer to each of us. Our first love, the only thing that we are focused on, the only thing that we care about, but also remembering what you said to Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep three times. Help us to love you so much that we cannot help to feed your sheep. Help us to love you so much, Lord Jesus, that we cannot help but recognize that that was our calling from before the days that we were born, that the works that were written in our books, I would even submit before there was time. And we praise your holy name. And now to him, the Lord Jesus, our King, Yeshua Messiah, who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us faultless before the presence of your glory, Father God, with exceeding joy. And to you, Father, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And to all of you out there, you know, you know, we all we all like to hear, and why wouldn't we? We all want to hear praise reports, and our Heavenly Father wants to be praised. It is it is our destiny. <laughs> it is our destiny for all of eternity. Glory to Jesus, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John fourteen thirteen and fourteen. Praise God. That is the essence, the the quintessential essence essence of all of the works that we do here on this earth. All of the, the you know the 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 underlying theme of love behind behind all of our prayers. You know, a, a lot of people don't understand that the God dynamics and 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 our Heavenly Father dynamics and and how it all works in the universe. And it's funny because you know when you get to that point where you're blessed enough to actually understand these things and and not everybody will come to that revelation they will not ever completely understand it i have books in my library even behind me right now that are inches thick written by incredible uh you know um i don't know what you would call them i guess i don't want to just say a theologian because i don't think that's adequate but some really good scholarly individuals will just say that godly scholarly individuals that don't you know i bought the books because i was like wow that's a really interesting subject you know god at war god at war you know that's the title one of them and um uh and i started to read in and everything and it was really deep and it but you know that it was you know a lot of the people that do some of the the best i don't want to say the best but some of the most in-depth uh, uh, work out there for the Lord or have historically while they were alive on the earth, they get so far into the weeds that they're not able to see that they're even in a forest. And that can be a real problem because, um, uh, well, you want to know that you're in a forest. In fact, you want to be able to get above the forest if you want to use that as an analogy. You want to get above the forest to be able to see what's beyond the forest. Not only do you want to be able to see how big the forest is, but you want to see how what goes beyond the forest. You want to see, be able to, you know, like rise up. I've used this that analogy before. You want to be able to rise up in your walk with Christ in, in, in Jesus. And you want to walk. You want to be able to rise up so far up above that forest that not only can you see, oh, you know, because you're down on the on, on, you know, if you get into the weeds so much and you spend all your time in the strongs and you're looking at your Englishman concordance and lexicons and everything else, you can get really into the weeds. Yes, sir. But. You oftentimes will lose the big picture, and that big picture is the one which is oftentimes the most important one. And so, so, so many very, very, very good teachers out there that have, you know, record, you know, just, I don't know, just uh, track records, if you will, of uh, being some of the best teachers uh, in the in in the in Bible text. Uh, they have that attribute associated with their teaching, where they get into the weeds, uh, and, and they have historically gotten into the weeds so deep that they just missed so many and unbelievably vital, important things uh, it, that were just staring them right in the face, but they couldn't see them. It, 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 it aligns with that analogy so perfectly, you know, uh, you know, you, you know that you, you can't see the forest for the trees. And that would be, you know, the analogy to that again would be, you know, you're you're in the Amazon rainforest and you see all the, you know, you hear all the animals all around you, but you can't see them. Uh, you know, you 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 know that they're you know they're there. That's kind of like uh, an analogy for demons being everywhere, right? Or angels, really? I mean, some of them are kind of, you know, like pretty birds or whatever that's the way i would analogize them anyway praise jesus but anyway um but you know but but the person that's you know down at the bottom of, underneath that canopy they may not they have no idea they they don't know where they are they don't know if there's a village over the hill there was a, there was a movie recently that I, I you know i don't know how many years ago i watched it what is i forget what the title of it was it was about these two guys or two or three guys i think it was three and they got a, they got somebody to take them on a a journey through the amazon i forget what the their motivation was but they did they went through the mo- and it was a true story it was based on a true story and they had this guy give them a tour but things got out of hand and they had some disagreements and didn't go exactly as they 
land. And ultimately, a couple of them went off on their own. And it was a really interesting movie. But that whole concept of them getting lost, you know, not being able to see the forest for the trees was really kind of ingrained into that whole dynamic because they really couldn't find their way around where they were. It was you can't, If you can't see, when you're so deep underneath the canopy, you can't even see which direction you're going in some cases. You know, you're not even be able to see where the sun rises and all that other stuff or whether or not the moss is on this side of trees because it, that, that all those dynamics get lost because you're so far into the weeds. And that's a problem. So you don't, you know, and so people will, you know, uh, there will be teachings out there that'll do things like saying, well, you know, I think the book of Luke and the warnings in the Olivet Discourse in the book of Luke is actually talking about a time that occurred back in 1300 to 1400. And they'll start to slice it and dice it and try to figure out what era it's talking about. I'm like, forget that. Ecclesiastes 1.9 applies. That which was will always be. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is a cycle. Uh, you know, uh, um, lines upon lines, precepts upon precepts, here a little, there a little. See, there are a lot of people out there that will say, John 16.2 is talking about a time that was a long time ago. That's talking about synagogues. They'll, they'll dive into the context. Jesus will say, they will kick you out of the synagogue. Just there will come a time that they kill you and think that they have done God a service. But they do this because they have not known the Father nor me. And they'll try to take it and they'll slice it and they'll dice it and they'll say, well, that, well, it mentions the word synagogue. Therefore, it must be talking about the time or it must be talking about this part. You know, or it must be talking about it. You know, no, doesn't must be nothing. Doesn't must be nothing. Praise Jesus. When you get to a place where you are spiritually discerning the scripture, it becomes totally lines upon lines, precepts upon precepts. Thank you, Jesus. Here a little, there a little. And you and you have to climb on the shoulders. It, every single verse is relevant. But if you don't rise up to that point where you can see that you're in a forest, where you can get up above the canopy, where you keep looking at Jesus, where you are seeking the Lord patiently but fervently in tears. Seek me and you will find me if you seek me with all of your heart. How much is that? How long do you have to pray? Why is it that the foolish virgins have to go and buy more oil? Why can't they just cash in right there? Hey, if they know Jesus is coming and they, and you know, and why, 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 could, why couldn't they, you know, if they're talking to the, the wise virgins, why did the wise virgins have to send them away? Because the change of heart that is required to get to where you need to get in your walk for the days that we have ahead of us is not something that happens overnight. Doesn't happen overnight. And that and and so there's that sanctification process, that deep, deep change that occurs inside of you. That's why I think, you know, well, at least in my walk, and or or actually holding on to the bus bumper and, you know, for dear life, hallelujah, right, kids? Thank you, Jesus. Oh. But, you know, uh, in my walk right now, I am so laser focused on intimacy, intimacy. And um, and I, I, I and um, and I want to thank also, I, I, you know, I don't want to detract from from the concept of cl- cl- going after Jesus and that intimacy, making him your first love. Do not when you're listening to people out there and you're learning about and you're knowing you're following this person or that teacher or that teacher or whatever and they're out there talking to, and they're they're slicing everything up and they're analyzing it like crazy and they're telling you that well, you know, I as far as I can tell, uh you know, the uh the the report cards of the seven churches of revelation, well this is talking about this era and and we're in the Laodicean era. That is a wrong answer. Mm. Right, that is not how it works. All seven of those churches' report cards are applicable to today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that is very important. Otherwise, you would lose focus on the fact that Jesus has to be our first love. But so many people try to slice and dice things. Oh, we're in the Laodicean era. No, that is not correct. There are churches of Sardis, churches of Thyatira, churches of every one of them, church of Ephesus. We're supposed to make Jesus our first love right now. And if he isn't, rut row, rut row, scrooby roo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you don't want to be there. I'm telling you, you don't want to be there. Praise God. I mean, anybody that's looking around at the things that are going on around the world right now that isn't like, okay, listen, I got to get out of here. Um, I need to, you know, I, I need to change. Look, if, you, if you're not. Give, if you're not bubbling up, if you're not touching other people's lives, lives out of love, if you're, you know, you got to, you know, start a Bible study at your house or something, you know, do, do anything, Get, give more, give more. I don't care if you're retired or not, give more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, pray more. Prayer is you know, arguably the single most anointed thing that you can do on behalf of God. 
but you have to get that first. You have to understand that blessed is he who believes and has not seen, which is what Jesus told Thomas. All right, and this, this is very important to get these things. And when Jesus says you're blessed, this is very important. Okay, this echoes back to, you know, to Numbers 24, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 624, where you got the Arianic blessings and things like that, because it's all about Jesus. The whole Bible is all about Jesus. I and the Father are one, John 1030. Praise God. All right, so it's, it's, it's so exciting when you finally get to the place where you're not, where, where you've climbed up the ladder, you're running toward Jesus, and then you're like, now I've got to come to that place of intimacy. It's not that you weren't dwelling in the secret place of the Most High already. I'm not suggesting that you weren't. If you're on your knees in prayer, if you feel at peace, the greatest amount of peace in your life is when you're on your knees in prayer to the Lord, to our Father, to Jesus. When you are in that place, that is your secret place of the Most High. Okay? But there's still a dynamic. See, keep in mind that Odin Hetrick, again, taken to heaven, uh, you know, 80 plus times, all right, when he first met Jesus and he was on his knees, when he, when he met it, he was like, oh, and he fell to his knees and he was, you know, and he was, it, 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 you know, tears were coming out of his eyes. Uh, you know, he, his, his, he was at, at Jesus' feet and his sandals were right in front of him and a tear fell out of his eyes. And, um, and uh, Jesus said to him, Odin, that tear represents how much you love me. And Odin was blown away. Now, this is a guy, get this, this is a guy that was taken to heaven 80 sometimes, all right, little church pastor, and when I say small church pastor in Marysville, Pennsylvania, trust me, folks, I am from Pennsylvania, I lived there for 22 years, and I am telling you Marysville is truly the quintessential essence, I love that word, quintessential, I'll just use it a whole bunch of times, you know, but anyway, um, uh, it is the epitome of the one streetlight town, it really is, and he, and that's where he's from. Or was wrong. Now he's up in heaven. But when he was in heaven, he had he his reward package included not only a country mansion, but also a city mansion, which is awesome. All right, amen. So there's no doubt in my mind that he he fully qualified as part of the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. And we know that. All right. But then there he was before Jesus with his head, you know, fall, you know, right at his feet, in in and, and a tear, and Jesus was calling it calling his attention to him, saying that tear represents how much you love me. And Odin was like blown away. He's like, Lord, I thought I loved you way more than that. This is a guy that traveled around, you know, with the, I forget what they call him, the singing Hetrix or whatever with his daughters and everything. And they would just, you know, travel around and just like sing about Jesus. And I mean, this is like, it doesn't get any better than that. Praise God. But yet his intimacy with Jesus obviously wasn't quite where it could have been. How much more so does that have to be the case with us right now in the days that we are in right today? To be qualified, to be as Elijah Wow, imagine that. Imagine that to be one of those who were whisked up off the earth, or as Ed Dame says when they're doing their remote viewing, you know, vacuumed up by some kind of thing in the air or things in the air. I love that. <laughs> I know what I think, but I'm not going to get into that. That's, that's for the Peterson Chronicle show. Let's just put it this way. I believe that there's a reason why Revelation 12 says uh, that, uh, that the woman will be taken away on, the, on uh, two wings of an eagle uh, to a place of safety where she is fed for times, times, and half the time. That has to be the bride. And it ain't the Petra. I'm sorry. That's another one. No Petra, no Petra. How old do you think of Jesus? Right, kids? Any Petra? All right, all right. Hey, kids, is there going to be a third Solomon Temple before the rapture? <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Because when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, is it the temple? <laughs> no. How do we know that, kids? Is it because Jesus said, uh, evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, but none will be given to it except the sign of what? Jonah, right, kids? <laughs> and what happened to the sign of jo What happened with Jonah, kids? What happened with Jonah? He would spend three days and three nights in the belly of the whale. Kids, is it dark in the belly of the whale? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what else is there for three days and three nights? Could it be when uh, Revelation 6, 12, and 13 says, The sun turns black as sackcloth of hair? Could that be the three days of darkness, kids? <laughs> yeah. When the abomination of desolation stands in the holy place, could that holy place be the temple body of a human? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. Holy majoli. Let the reader beware. Let the reader beware. If you can receive it, if you can receive it, you know, Jesus always gives us hints when we're not, you know, when, you know, when, when Jesus would say, if you can receive it or let the reader beware, 
One thing that you can believe with all of your heart is that 99.99999% of the best Bible teachers and theologians will not get it. Yeah. But you know what? Why is it that the that the uh, post ba- I'll call it the post baby boomer because people spank me. Well, they you know nicely and lovingly, thank you Jesus. But they, they come along and they they were like, well, you don't really have your baby boomer boomer generation thing down exactly right. It's the, the delineation of the years is actually it ends right here. And I'm like, you know, whatever. You know, because you know what? Here's the thing. Maybe I don't have it exactly right, but I don't care because I'm going to rewrite that that whole boomer thing. All right, the way I see it, thank you Jesus, because I'm looking at it from a biblical standpoint is you've got the World War II generation, which is the Pledge of Allegiance generation, okay? And then, you know, the people, the, the, you know, the, the, you know the, the, the ones that come from a generation that's about 20 years older than me, and I'm, I'm going to be 59 in a couple of months, all right? It's getting up there. I'm getting pretty close to early retirement right now, which, of course, I don't really have any of. I'll just have to depend on Social Security, and by that time, maybe it'll be the time when Jesus said, no man can work, and will anybody have any money coming in? Wait a minute. When the global financial collapse of the third seal occurs, will anybody that has a retirement in the bank have any money? I would think the answer is no. Right, kids? Yeah. Yeah, so don't get comfortable, folks. Don't get comfortable. No, no matter where you are in your walk, don't get comfortable. What you need to get comfortable in is trusting in God, trusting in Jesus. Remember I told the story about how – I was rolling around and pitching and everything in my bed, you know, to the left and the right, everything like that. And, you know, it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm like, and, and then, and, and, and it was like, and I, I was like, okay, you know, and I opened up my phone for a second, which I know it's a no, no, but I couldn't sleep anyway. So I was like, okay, I'm going to read the Bible or something. And, th- and there it was Jesus calling and I pressed, pressed it and instead opened up Smith Wigglesworth and it said, trust in God. That was the title that popped up on my screen. And then I got a later confirmation from another believer, uh, the wife of a pastor, that you know had the, exactly as soon as I came into my desk to start, start my day job, bam! She's like, Johnny, Johnny, look at this, you know, trust in God, Smith Wigglesworth. That was like a double confirmation. Praise God. Well, remember I told you that. All right, now get this. Now we all need to be encouraged. We all need to believe that you know all of us would like to see a manifestation of our prayer. Now sometimes that 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 is actually an unrighteous event, and you're like, what do you mean? Well. See, a lot of people can't – oh, man, i got to keep track of this because I'm going to run in circles again, and sometimes I do this. Um, let me go back and um, – yeah, let me point, point my arrow up on my little mini whiteboard to this so I don't forget. All right, I'm going to make a note. Trust in God because I'll, I'll – okay. So the people – so a lot of times what happens is people don't realize um, that – okay, so James you know, said essentially, and I'm paraphrasing – um, not quoting, but in the book of James, he basically said, uh, you know, that we should not pray amiss out of our own lusts. But the problem is a lot of believers don't understand that that's what they're doing. They have no idea. They believe that because they're praying so fervently, so first off, they follow men. OK, so they follow evangelical Christianity. And they're like, oh, well, I've known this person. I've seen this person on this list and that list and this email list and that email list. And I know they must be anointed because they're they're this and they're that. And, you know, God has touched them. And, you know, a lot of the um, a lot of the people uh, from the World War Two generation, the those that are 20 years older than me in their 70s and such, a lot of those people. They're following evangelicals. They've been following for years and I've had them throw their names up in my face over the years and they're falling like flies getting busted for sexual sexual misconduct, multiple ones. I'm not going to name any names. Trust me, no way, no way, because those who judge will never understand, and those who understand will never judge. Now, it's a whole different thing when you're following Titus and, and, and First and Second Timothy and you're trying to run an ecclesia appropriately, but there are still guidelines that are in there that are associated with your admonishment being very, very gentle and loving and in private. You don't humiliate anybody, but there are rules. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that because it's a whole other teaching, and it, you know, and I'm not even going to get into that. Thank you, Jesus. I want to stay focused on the on the program tonight, but I, I wanted to share with you, you know, re, re, I wanted you to recall how the Lord told me to trust Him. All right, Amen. 
And you know, also know, the listeners of this program also know that I threw, I threw out, about, like, I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, a fleece for prayer. And there have been a lot of people that have emailed me, God bless every one of you. And I do. I pray in tears on my knees for a tenfold anointing and blessing and the holy fire of God to fall upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Fire of God around about every single one of you in Jesus' name. That it, the protection of a thorny hedge of protection in the name of Jesus. And angels to be dispatched upon your household and your dwelling place. And to save the souls of your loved ones in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For every single one of you that have lifted me up at all in prayer. And I will continue to pray that for you. I will. I promise it. Before God, whom I fear. I, I feel I fear hellfire is what I fear. Praise Jesus. And, um... Mm-mm-mm-mm. But anyway, uh, I wanted to share this with you because we all need some encouragement. We ha- Today I experienced nothing less than a miracle on my job. Now, be careful about this because this is what the human mind does. And then this would be non-biblical. This would be a non-biblical practice of a saint. A non-biblical practice of a saint would be when, when, a, when a particular believer would say, please pray for me. And there's, there's even scriptures in the Old Testament that say, you know, something along the line, I'm paraphrasing. I have to defer to Sister Nancy to refresh my memory on where she found that verse. But there was one, I, I think it's in Samuel, but it could be in Kings. But anyway, you know, the person says, um, woe be unto me for failing to pray for you that I might sin against thee or something along that line. So our, our admonishment in the scripture, our commandment indeed in the scripture, uh, you know, don't even get me going on Luke 12, uh, Luke 18, the, uh, the, you know, the, you know, the parable of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, persistent widow. And, and it's all over the scriptures, folks. I mean, all you got to do is re- read the introduction, uh, the inter- introductory text associated, you know, and the, and, the, and, and the book of Acts and understand how they behaved. There was always a continuous prayer of the saints for the saints. OK, and then, of course, for others as well. Uh, but um, uh, that is our calling. And who's under attack? Well, who's the accuser of the oh, Satan? The, the beat or, the, you know, the beat you call him. He's got so many names. It's unbelievable. But, you know, the, the, you know, the dragon, the accuser of the brethren who accuses the brethren. But day and night, does he accuse the sinners? No. Why would he bother going after the sinners? I certainly wouldn't bother. If I was him, I wouldn't bother at all. Why would I send any of my demons uh, to, to go do anything to the people that are on an eight-lane freeway going straight to hell? They're already mine. I'm going after you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And again, if you are the type of uh, believer that is a real threat to Hasatan, the chief prosecutor in the courts of heaven, then guess what? Your face is going to be plastered all over hell. A wanted poster will be plastered in hell, and that's where you want your picture. You, you want him to, to hate your guts. Praise God. You want to be someone who is instead of, you know, um, again, the analogy that I would use is, again, spiritual warfare. Very, very important. How you pray, very, very important. Some of the greatest rewards that will be given to the saints. You have no excuse for not having good works. None, because you could be in a wheelchair, a shut-in in your house, and especially if you were in that situation and you have no place to go and you have income coming in, that you have no reason to not be spending a large portion of your day in prayer, praying for the lost, employing spiritual warfare methods, which are very, very effective. I, I, I'm telling you, I had a personal friend that was taken into the spiritual realm. She saw what was going on in the spiritual ether where the demons and the angels are fighting. She said that she saw with her own eyes the prayers of the saints. These are saints that do not even see what's going on around them. They're just doing it out of faith. Blessed is he who believes and has not seen. What does that mean when you are given the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ? For behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 10, 19. That was given to the 70 sinners that were in the multitudes. That was before Pentecost. People get all wrapped up in everything, and they're like, well, I got to slice the Bible this way because Jesus, you know, Jesus did that, and Jesus was talking to the Jews, and, and you know, dispensationalism, and blah, 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 blah. And, we, and, you know, we don't have to worry about the rapture coming because there isn't a third Solomon's temple. Baloney. <laughs> it's baloney. Barley harvest, first watch. Wheat harvest, second watch. I am convinced in my heart that the wheat... Now, I know I could be wrong. I know I could be wrong. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And if he doesn't give it to you, that's fine. 
That's fine. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I know what the Lord showed me. But I don't believe a word I say. You know, go ahead and believe whatever, <laughs> you know. And, and folks, believe me, folks, I, I realize that this program is exceedingly advanced. <laughs> I get that, okay? There are very, very, very few people who, um, you know, can – when they're when, when they're awakening to the weirdness going on around the world, they go on a journey. Well, many of us know about that journey. Hold on a second. I got to hit this little button over here. There we go. They, they go on a journey, and when they start that journey, you know things start opening up, and they start to investigate this, and they find out about Pizza Gate, they find out about this, they find out about that. Eventually, they work. You know, maybe they they get into some really advanced things. Who knows? Uh, but um, not everybody progresses that far. Sometimes it just flips a switch, and they're, they're just like, oh, I, that's absolutely crazy. I don't believe in that stuff. If I could – man, I'll tell you what. Praise Jesus. If I could have – I don't know, like um, – <laughs> if I could have maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, $1,000 for every single person over the last 10 years who has come to me and said uh, that they <laughs> – when I first heard you on the radio, I thought you were a raven lunatic. But then, and then they come back like three years later, and I remembered them. I remembered them. I've had a lot of people say, I can't believe you remember me. They're coming back. I knew they would. I knew they would. Eventually they would. I knew that they would slip away. I knew that they would get lost in, in the world. Uh, I knew that they would say like, wow, 2012, nothing happened. Wow, this, I guess this was a big, you know, you know, deception from the believers or whatever the case is, and they'd slip back in, they'd become discouraged, and they'd start hitting the whiskey bottle, whatever the case is. And that's what happens. Doesn't mean they can't be saved. A lot of people out there say awful things like they should never say, like, uh, you know, uh, oh, well, if a person backslides after they were saved, they were never saved in the first place. That is just baloney. Baloney, 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 baloney. Baloney. There's more baloney out there than the, salt, than, than the Palmyra location, of, uh, which I think is the only location in the world, which, by the way, is the best baloney in the entire world. If you want the very, very best meat, the very best baloney in the entire world, you want to go and get Seltzer's Sweet Lebanon Bologna out of Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Seltzer's Sweet, S-E-L-T. I know people are going to be like, Danny, can you spell that for me? I want to get some of that baloney, and you can order over the Internet. I think they go through Webstaurant stores now. A lot of them, to save money, they're not doing But anyway, uh, you know, uh, Seltzer's, S-E-L-T-Z-E-R-S, Seltzer's, Sweet Lebanon, like it sounds, Lebanon. That's actually a town in Pennsylvania. Baloney. Okay, but that's the, that's the actual food. I'm talking about, you know, bovine feces. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, cow patties. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Um, Because that's what we got out there. We got more cow patties floating around out there. And, 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 you know, isn't it ironic that that's coming from somebody that, for the most part, the vast majority of relatively young Christians, which is pretty much everybody in church today, with a few exceptions, very tiny few exceptions, they are, you know, milk drinkers, just like Paul was crying about in in throughout the epistles. He, you know, the, I forget which church it was. He, he was, you know, it, it was so sad. And he was like, uh, many of you, I, I think that many of you should have been teachers by now, but you're still drinking milk. You know, uh, and, and, and you read again, the, if you read very carefully the first part of each epistle, there's hidden gems in there. There are mysteries in there, like the mystery of Epaphroditus, which is the one I tell anybody with the gift of the divine healing. Steer, steer clear of Epaphroditus. It'll, if, you, if you read that story, it'll mess with your faith. So I just, you know, I don't, I don't even bring it up. If I'm talking to somebody that I know that has a calling in that area, I don't even mention it. Praise God. All right, but I'm into the mysteries. I want to know why there's disconnects, and I, and, I, and I thank Jesus for that. I praise God for that. But you know what? Most people can't accept it. If you can receive it. Why did Jesus say that over and over? If you can receive it, let the reader beware. If you can receive it, let the reader beware. If you can receive it. He said that because people can't receive it. <laughs> Warning, Will Robinson. I mean, these things are not really that complicated, but we have come to a time. Thank you, Jesus. We have come to a time right now where the World War II generation is just now beginning to barely, most of the advanced believers, which are most of them are not, but there is a few that have been exposed to some of the more advanced concepts, and, and, and the Lord will talk to their hearts, and, and will bring them along. Praise God. I know that. Uh, a lot of them have spoken to me. I, like I mentioned, if I had, <laughs> if I had a thousand bucks, I'd, I'd be retiring right now. But I can't retire. Because <laughs> I thought Jesus was coming here like, you know, a couple of years ago. <laughs> so well, anyway. But I wanted to share this with you regarding the trust in God dynamic. Please do not make the mistake 
we, we never stop praying for each other. I don't stop praying for you, and I pray in Jesus' name that you don't stop mentioning me. Even, even if you're, you've got this big list of people that you pray for every single morning, and you're like, wow, this is a lot, and i got to go to work. And little, you know, If you just mention just one little sentence to say, Father, could please continue to protect Johnny's job. Okay. Now, when the day comes, if the day comes that I need to make some kind of paradigm shift in my life, the Lord has opened up doors that are very blessed, and I will have opportunities that will be presented to me. I believe that with all of my heart. Plus, the Lord admonished me rather strongly, not, you know, but in a nice way, you know, that, that I needed to trust Him. I was failing. I was failing to trust Him. It's not a good thing to not to not trust God. And and you know, we really need to not do that. <laughs> not, not, right? Double not. All right. Praise God. All right. So, um, but I wanted to share this with you because it's amazing. One of the greatest threats to my job, a miracle just occurred today. It is unbelievable. And due to your prayers, that the, the most imminent, imminent threat to my job. There's other ones. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of them. So again, if you appreciate the show right now and you would, and you, you know, and all that, then please continue to lift me up in prayer. All right. Praise God. Uh, please do. And I will continue to pray a tenfold blessing down upon you and your household and your loved ones, et cetera, et cetera. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it's all over the Bible. Again, read the first part of each one of the epistles very, very carefully and see how much they prayed for each other. Never mind the book of, uh, book of Acts, which is all over the place there. Praise God. All right. Thank you, Jesus. So anyway, I did want to share that there was a breakthrough today. It was nothing less than an incredible miracle. I was slated to go to a special class that would have, well, pretty much destroyed my life. I, it, it, it would have put me in a position, let me just leave it at this, whereby I would have had to tender my resignation, okay, which would have put me in a very, very difficult place um, for a number of reasons, including the fact that my house needs some work on it. And I can't sell it right at the moment because if I sell it right now, I'll take such a loss that I won't even have any money to be able to fall back upon when I do move. All right, praise God. All right, uh oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, hold on, I got to see what's going on here. All right, praise God. All right, so nothing, nothing much. I just had uh, uh, the Golden GIB Studios went dark for a second. Oh my gosh, praise you, Jesus. Great kids. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, kids, wake up. So uh, that I was slated to go for this particular training thing that would have it would have been the end of me. And that was that was it was it was amazing. I mean, they were sending me emails, uh, warning me, uh, you know, getting me to, in, you know, on this group. And I was like, no, no, no. If, if I go to that, I'm done for. I'm done for. And then I started to see you know, this was like a weeks after you all started to pray for me. And I'm going to use you all because it saved me time uh, because I'm not a southerner. I don't do any of that stuff. But anyway, I'm just saying you all. Uh, but um, uh, but. Thank you for your prayers, because the first hurdle has been conquered, okay, because I'm telling you, folks, I was slated for this. This was a, like a guarantee, and I was in tears praying about this, and it's one of the things that I was praying that you were praying for, you know, in, that the Lord would hear and all that through your prayers as well. Well, that, that was one of the things. There's other ones, too, that are teed up. I, I like to use the term teed up, queued up, teed up, queued up. There's, there's a series of threats that Hasatan has queued up for me. They're just for me. I had, I had a very anointed saint email me, and she's like, I was wondering if you were being attacked by the devil. You know, if this was a satanic, uh, an orchestrated satanic attack, and I took it before the Lord, and then the Lord revealed it to me and showed me in a vision, and yes, you are under heavy attack. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been under heavy attack for three years. <laughs> heavy, heavy attack. Thank you, Jesus. But anyway, um, so I again thank I wanted to give you feedback because a miracle occurred. It's too complicated. It would take me at least 20 minutes to give a, a detailed testimony of what happened, but I will tell you this. The absolute bar none impossible occurred, and the person that that was up at senior management that wanted to make sure that I was on this team sent me an email and said, do you really want to do this? And I, I was like, what? Because it was guaranteed that this person was going to have me do it. It was completely guaranteed. I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew. And all of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, he comes and sends me an email. It was the impossible email. Well, I almost started to cry. And I said to him, well, you know, my career path and my goals, I don't know if I'd really be passionate about that. And I kind of just laid it out. And he was like, cool, no problem. I, I, you know, I'm totally supportive of that. I recommended that it be given to some other people. And he agreed. If that ain't worth a praise offering to Jesus, I don't know what is. Hallelujah! All right. Thank you, Jesus. 
So there's a little bit of encouragement for you, um, a real-world example of the Lord moving. But um, at the same time, it's probably, given all the things that are going on in the world, it's highly likely that that is only uh, giving me a little extra time, praise Jesus, uh, to be able to get the house in order. Because right now, if I... You know, I don't know how who out there understands house sales, but when you have like big dogs in your house for 20 years, like I do, you got to have a renovation before you, you know, when you sell it, you move out and you send in a team of renovators, but there, but there's a limit. You know, there's a limit to how much you can spend on the renovation before you have absolutely zero profit from the house sales. You can have a house for 20 years, and you should be able to walk away with a, you know, a pretty good amount of money to be able to, you know, hang out with, you know, until Jesus comes, kind of thing, uh, you know, and and work work on the side and go into semi semi retirement and everything. But no, 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 no. There are certain things that those renovators will do and won't do for a reasonable price. And I got some of the unreasonable things, and so you know, so I've got to get some of those taken care of by some far more affordable folks. All right, so this maybe is probably just buying me time. So please continue to pray. Just a sentence. And I thank Jesus for every one of you. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Right, kids? You, you love them too, don't you? All right. All right. Praise God. So I wanted to give you a little bit of positive feedback on that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's go ahead and move into the news. Uh, and then uh, and uh, there's so much to cover. Well, there's not as nearly as much to cover. I, oh, one more thing. All right, I want to get this out there. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So I got so many emails. I don't know why, but there are so many believers out there that absolutely love this radio show emails, which I pay bunches of money for every year. I actually had to put it on a monthly plan because when I would get the surprise annual fee, I was like, whoa, 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 hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I'm like, you know, oh my gosh. And and then I finally went, you know, to the company that's doing it and all that kind of stuff. And they're like, oh, well, we can put you on a monthly amount for this much. And I was like, do it now. Hallelujah. Um, but anyway, but you know, I don't know why. I can't, you know, a lot of times when the podcasts don't work, you know, there's glitches that occur. You know, Blog Talk Radio has their glitches. They're an extremely advanced technological service. They have a lot of advantages over YouTube and all that other stuff. Never mind, they're not policed by the Google goblins as much as you. You know, they're they're kind of they kind of like you know. So long after the Google goblins take down all the take all the Christians and all that stuff off of YouTube, guess what? Blog Talk Radio, providing they haven't gone out of business too by then, will highly or been bought out by Google will then will likely still be here. Also, because of the um. Because it's not really high fidelity. See, they, they actually, Blog Talk actually was like sending out these communications. They're like, we're going to move everybody to high definition, but you're going to lose all your audio clips and blah, blah, blah. And, and your, your shows are going to become hundreds and hundreds of megabytes in size and blah, blah, blah. And I, I wrote them and I said, please, no, no. Because, right, you know, they had done one small upgrade and I was getting emails from people in very remote parts of the world that were regular listeners of this program and they could no longer get the program. Because it went from 30 megabyte to 100 megabyte. Imagine that. Yes, there are still parts of the world that listen to this program that are they, – they don't have enough bandwidth. Places in Africa and stuff. They listen in, they listen in groups in, um, in, in uh, internet cafe boutiques. There are people in the Philippines. I had one brother uh, write me, and he's like, yes, I, I hung out with people in the Philippines, and we had one connection coming in. We listened to the program live, and, uh, and we had over 300 people in the room. Amen. Praise God. All right. So um, uh, and so I'm very sensitive about that. And I and I recognize that there's going to come a time when YouTube is going to be like, forget about it. And it's already starting to happen now. It's a miracle of God until he that restrains is taken out of the way. Second Thessalonians 2. I don't know. Three, four, five, six, probably five or six. Maybe four or five. But anyway, um, uh, until he that restraints is taken out of the way. All right. And, and, and our father isn't taken out of the way yet. And I, I see, I, I see. Sometimes I see prophecies that say things like, you know, this is not my will that these things are happening upon the earth right now. And I'm like, excuse me, you need, Mr. Prophet, Mrs. Prophet, you need to go back to your Bible. <laughs> I'm like, you know, the, as it says in First Corinthians 14, we're supposed to judge the prophecies. Those are the ones that I tear out and like, uh, okay, this one here didn't make the cut. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But that's okay. Praise God. Praise God. It is a blessing to. For, to have some of these understandings and and uh, and also to recognize that if anyone thinks they know anything, they know nothing yet 
as they ought to know. First Corinthians 8, 2. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And, and it is a blessing to know that, you know, we live. Oh, man, I just had a conversation with somebody about the meat and the tear. You know, and and you know, and I, I love this individual, a very good friend of mine. And um, we've had her, you know, and she was like, you know, and I was like, no, 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 no. You're thinking about the wise and the foolish virgins, not the wheat and the tares. The tares can never become wheat. Get it? The tares can never become wheat. They grow up with the wheat. They look like the wheat, but they can never become wheat. Okay, the tares is not talking about unsaved people. The tares is talking about shape shifting reptilians. Okay, the tares is talking about alien human hybrids. Okay, these are entities on this earth that reside amongst us that are not human or, well, again, uh, you know, twice dead, uh, as the book of Job or J- Jude refers to them as. They're twice dead. Okay, it, 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 it's, but, but that's why the Bible says to us, preach the gospel to every living creature. Do you ever think about that? Why do you think it chose that word? Hmm? There's a reason for all that stuff in the Bible. But until you can receive it, you will not get it. But do you need to get it in order to make it? No. No, you don't. You can be, you know, intellectually underprivileged. Amen? In a big way. But if you, if Jesus is your first love, ah, therein lies the key. That's the key. Because if Jesus is your first love, you give until it hurts. You touch people's lives. You pray fervently for people. You you change other people's lives in your actions and your ways. That's works. All right, praise God. Faith without works is dead. Dead faith equals heaven? I don't think so. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And if anybody mentions that in churchianity, oh, he said the word works. Boy, they'll drum you right out the front door. <laughs> John 16, 2 will become your reality. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right, kids? <laughs> All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And on that note, let's go ahead and move into the news. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? <laughs> Not normal. It's just wrong. Uh, wrong. It's not normal. This is disturbing. <laughs> Game over. Praise God. Uh, and Sister Casey, if you have called into the show, hang in there for me a little bit. I always have this bad habit of running overtime, and I think I'm going to go ahead and get with Sister Nancy to go ahead and let the uh, uh, let all of our guests know to just go ahead and call in at 9.15, because it seems like every single time I end up bleeding over 10 or 15 minutes, uh, and, um, and I think that might be a better thing to do rather than have folks hold. But anyway, Sister Casey, if you are on hold right now, please do hold for me a little bit longer. I got to get some of this news out. Uh, it it is nowhere near as much but I, uh, as we had on the last program. And, yes, there was a podcast problem with Blog Talk Radio for the Diana Pulliam uh, 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 program that we did um, uh, on um, looking at the clock here. Yes, uh, this last Sunday night. And a lot of people, they, they, like I said, they don't for some reason they don't sign up for the emails. Tribulation-now.org. Tribulation-now.org. Okay. Try not to do the broken record thing. All right. You can just type in tribulation now. It'll pop right up on Google. And then when you get to the main page, there's a big red button. You just click it, type in your email. You don't even have to confirm. Just type it in. Bam. You're on the email list. And those links, when the podcasting doesn't work, that way I don't have to get a whole bunch of emails from folks going, I'm trying to look on my podcast and there's no radio show from last Sunday. What's going on? I'm like, oh. but long-suffering, right? Amen. So uh, I'll usually send them a link so they can hear it because if you have the link from the email, you'll be able to hear the show even if you don't, even if your podcaster isn't working, right? All right. Praise God because Blog Talk Radio is very, very, it's cutting edge. It's very advanced. It's much more advanced, believe it or not, than YouTube. Um, in, 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 in the features and, and the abilities and the things that you can do with it. Much more advanced. All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so, um, uh, and I know, and, and Brother uh, uh, West Coast Walter is letting me know that it's been fixed, and I, I was going to say that. Yes, it has been fixed. In fact, I, what happened was I put up, I, 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 
I put up, I saved the show myself, and I figured I'm just going to go ahead and put it up myself by myself without any help from Blog Talk Radio. And then guess what? <laughs> then Blog Talk Radio comes back and fixes it, and they're like, hey, you have two of them up there now. And I'm like, eh, just leave it alone. Because that show from last Sunday was so important. Please, please, if you have not heard the show from last Sunday with Diana Pulliam, you need to hear it. Because all of the things that I shared in the beginning of that show will and shall remain relevant indefinitely until arguably, hopefully, we all make the barley harvest. Okay? First watch. Luke 12, 35, 36, 37, 38. Amen? Okay. All right. Um, uh, they're going to remain ele- relevant. Okay? The lightning, the, the weird freak lightning storms that are happening around the, the, the approach of Planet X, all this stuff. Now. It's happening right now. The, you know, the only time when people – if you're out there listening to the pillow prophets of the world and Seven Mountains people, then guess what? You're going to miss. You're going to be so busy making Trump your idol, your savior – Thinking that you're doing okay, thinking that that's all right to think like that. The problem is the folks that are doing it don't realize that it's not good. They don't realize that they've made him their first love. They don't realize it. They don't know. They see all the other evangelical Christians doing what they're doing, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm good, I'm cool. But they've lost. They're, they're off base. They're, they're veering off course. Okay. And I know a lot of people disagree with me. I'm telling you, folks, I am, I am a citizen of heaven, Philippians 3.20. I don't have a flag behind me. I never will. I won't. The reason why the Lord brought me up in the early 60s is because that was a rebellious. Uh, you can be like, well, you know, that's this generation or that generation. I don't care what generation it is. I was born in the 1960s. I was born right about the time that Kennedy was getting assassinated. Matter of fact, I was a baby, I was a little bitty baby when it happened. And... um. That that was the Jane Fonda, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Vietnam era. It's a rebellious generation. We didn't believe anything the government said. And guess what? Here I am, fifty-eight years old, soon to be fifty-nine, and I don't believe a dag nabbit word the government says. And you know what? There's actually people out there that believe me now. I've been studying this stuff now forever. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's not conspiracy theory. It's conspiracy research. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Right, kids. All right. Okay. And uh, hang in there for, for me, Sister Casey. All right. And we're going to jump over to you here in just a couple of minutes, but I want to blast through these news headlines and some of these uh, mail, these things that came in via, via the mailbag. Now, uh, a brother, uh, brother Scott sent in this email. He said he was he's sending me this, um, this email. I'm sorry, this link to uh, it is, um, it is Billy Graham's. Now I'm mentioning her because it's in a positive light. It's not negative. I'm not saying anything negative, but it's Billy Graham's daughter. And she's coming forward and she's admonishing people on a USA Today article that if they're following Donald Trump like they are, she, she, she quotes all the things that I used to quote in the very beginning you know, months of Donald Trump's or year of Donald Trump's uh, presidency, and they are right. The, her position is right. It is righteous. She is, she, there's nothing wrong with her position from a godly, Jesus-filled standpoint. The problem is she's not seeing the big picture. And I wasn't either. But at that time, there was no godliness occurring on Fox. Okay? You got to understand, the Lord – look, you don't have to believe me if you don't want to, but the Lord leads me to things. He shows me things. It, I, I live in a world of many miracles. I am constantly surrounded by many miracles all the time. I see it all the time. It's amazing. Just like Andrew Womack said, if your life's not supernatural, it's superficial. And he's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So anyway, um, uh, our blessed sister, uh, Billy, you know, her position, making the comment that, um, you know, uh, rejecting people at the border, building the border walls, uh, you know, all, that was un, it's unchristlike. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It really is. And that is a true statement. All the things that she says in the article are true. The problem is she doesn't understand that the answer is not A, the answer is not B, the answer is not C, the answer is all of the above. Is Trump good? Yes. Is Trump bad? Yes. <laughs> I know. It's like all, everybody's out there just going like this. That can't be true. I mean, it can't be. You know, it's like a, 
Now, uh, yep, that's how it works. That's why there will be lots of Christians going, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? Be gone from me, you doers of law. And it says, I have not known you. It is not black or white. See, the problem is our DNA is hardwired. Our DNA, I'm positive of this. And uh, it, it's hardwired to believe it's either on or off. You're either saved or not saved. That's not how it works. Sorry. <laughs> It's just how it is. Explain this verse, Titus 1.15, to the pure, all things are pure. Do I need to play the sound effect again? <laughs> we need to learn to be citizens of heaven. Oh, anyway, so praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted, just wanted to share that with you. See, if, see, the Lord brought me in front of the television to, look, I don't sit there like I used two years ago and stare at Fox News or stare at, I used to be a news junkie. No, the Lord brings me in front of the TV when he wants me to see something. He, when he wants me to see Franklin Graham saying there, give your life to Jesus Christ uh, right now as a commercial on Fox. I, you know, it, it, these are things of God. God is using Donald Trump. There is no doubt about it. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. Is he anointed like the evangelicals believe? No, he is not. But God is using them. Okay. But I know it's confusing. It's very hard. But our DNA is hardwired to see, think it's either one or the other. But it's never that. It's always all of the above. The Lord God tests the righteous. Our Father doesn't see as a man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance. But our Father looks at the heart. Right? Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, and you can believe whatever you want to believe. That's cool. Whatever. I just pray in Jesus' name that you make Jesus your first love. Otherwise, you're going to need to buckle up. You're going to be here extra long time. Okay. Glory to Jesus. All right. Then I had another brother send me an email, and he said, uh, like the Simpsons. Uh, and I'll just use this. The RS is, and uh, and I love this guy. He's just awesome. Praise Jesus. And um, uh, I don't even think he listened to the show. Probably won't even hear this. But anyway, he's like, uh, he, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people uh, used to listen to the show, like, you know, I'll, I'll say religiously, you know, in the early days back in 2011, 2012. And, um, and then they kind of, you know, they grew up and they, they went off and they're not like, you know, and, and that's fine. You know, they're out doing doing things for Jesus, and that's great. All right, praise God. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, but he, he wrote me. He's like, boy, he's like, Brother Johnny, the, the, all the signs and the manifestations and things that are happening around the world, uh, you know, it looks like we're going to be leaving soon. I'm so grieving for the people that are not getting it, that are not seeing, and all this kind of stuff. And I said, all I said was, well, it does look that way more so than any other time on the earth. The question is, and it's a $5 billion question, is is this. Do we end up having a period of respite after Trump gets reelected, or does our father allow Satan to continue his attacks? Because our father's in control, period. Anybody who doesn't understand that, I'm sorry, go back and read Job 1 over and over and over again until you get it. All right. And then, uh, and I said, um, I said, so is the metaphorical baby being born at this point, or is this one gigantic worldwide labor pain? It's super easy to see this as absolutely ir an irrecoverable, uh, and oh boy, do I hope that that is the case. I do. I really do. I, I hope that right now, with all of my heart, that this is about Jesus coming. I mean, I know that it's about Jesus coming, but I hope it's about, I'm, I, you know, for, for those of us who have been on the edge of our seat now for, for 10 years or 15 years or more, uh, you know what? <laughs> Hearing prophets coming out there and going, you know, uh, the ark door is closing. The ark door is closing. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. For 10 years? Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. All right. And then don't even get me going on the pillow prophets. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. Pillow prophets. And then the seducing spirits. It never ends. So we don't know. We have to keep on watching. There are prophecies out there that say that it's going to get really, really bad civil war, and then there's going to be a period of peace after civil war. Is that true? I don't know. But then there's bunches of other ones that say, no, 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 that's not going to happen. We don't know. We're going to have to watch. Brother Dan, a God's Healer 7, came forward, and he said uh, he had prophesied at one point and said that we're supposed to watch the events. Around us. I embrace that as being absolutely directly from the throne room of God, because that's what I've been doing ever since. Thank you, Jesus. I tune into a couple 
now and then just to give him a graze over. But as a, you know, and also I wanted to share this with you. Uh, uh, Andrew Strom from the um, uh, from what he calls the revival, you know, calls it the revivalist or whatever. And he sends out emails. He's very anointed. Praise God for his work. Um, uh, really great quotes from some super wonderful bi- biblical leaders over the years. His, uh, he's, his great ministry. And um, he, he says uh, he, he sent out a warning email to uh, folks and he says, America and the sudden storm, a warning. And you can just type in revival list on the Internet, Andrew Strom, S-T-R-O-M, and you can find him, I'm sure. Um, and anyway, um, he's he's feeling a check in his spirit that things are going to go south for the United States very, very quickly. And he's warning people. And um, but, you know, that could also be on account of that. He's seeing it from afar and he doesn't maybe he doesn't quite. I mean, maybe it's true, but maybe it's not. I think given all the information that we've been given. When you reconcile it against the word of God. It is. Very possible that God has induced labor and we may not come out of this tailspin. It may just get worse and worse and worse. And the ones that are saying there'll be respite may not really be hearing clearly. We all see through the mirror dimly. Respite means a break. However, then I had somebody else say, well, you know, um, uh, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, things are going to happen so fast, uh, you know, uh, one thing after another, uh, that you will not barely be able to get your breath between these events. But what does that mean? In God's economy of time, what does not being able to get your breath between the events mean? Oh, it means what's happening right now. Kenosha, Wisconsin, another, out, you know, another riot. Yeah, well, you know, the uh, serial or the uh, uh, multi-person shooter events have been happening now for years. Don't even go all the way back to what? Do you remember the Aurora theater shooting? That was a mind control slave. Remember that? What about Charlie Hebdo? Remember that? What about the Pulse Club? Remember that? What about San Bernardino? Remember that? What about the six officers that were killed in in Dallas, Texas? Remember that? People don't remember things because we're drinking too much fluoride in our water, I think. All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go ahead and move on uh, through the rest of the news, and we're going to jump over to Sister Casey. We're going to move through very, very quick. Uh, for I know that you all know about the uh, Hurricane Laura that's going to really wreak some havoc uh, there in our, around about where they do a lot of uh, oil work. Okay, it's going to be right there on the uh, on the uh, edge of Louisiana and Texas is going to hit tomorrow sometime around 1 a.m. According to the current trajectory as a cat four, it's going to be very, very bad. Pray for those people right now, especially for our fellow brothers and sisters that they don't have to suffer. That's for a miracle for them. Praise God. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Listen to this. Also, I got an email. Listen to this. This is amazing. All right. Um, Sister Stephanie sends in an email and she says, look at this. Yeah, once again, the uh, cover of The Economist, which is – these people are plugged into Satan like unbelievable. I don't know who they are. I don't know what they are. I don't even know if they're human. They may be terrorists. Who knows? But um, it, the cover of The Economist <clears throat> says, the aliens among us, and it has a round, spherical – Spaceship, very much like the David Doetry spaceship that he saw up in the sky in 1996 that was supposed to be a three-week warning before the rapture. Of course, he only saw it as a single event. And it is clearly depicted as a spaceship, even though they're making pretend that it's talking about the virus. Ah, get it? It's kind of like a double entendre. I don't know if that meets the definition, but I'm just saying. It's um, – anyway, so they, so they know. They absolutely know what's coming. And it lines right up with it. When? We don't know. All right, listen to this. Gaza fears the worst as Israel ratchets up its siege, okay, because of all the attacks that have been coming in out of Gaza. All right, and, uh, and, and indeed, and indeed, they ought to fear the worst. But that's not, that's just the beginning of it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Floods devastate parts of Afghanistan and Pakistan. Nearly 100 people killed, hundreds of homes destroyed as seasonal rains. See, see, here's the thing. The stuff that's going on over in Asia right now, And other parts of the world. It's so far worse than we're being led to believe. It's not just seasonal rain, folks. Okay? (laughs) There's like trillions of tons of ice that is melted. (laughs) Again, Nicholas Seener, the the seer, Nicholas uh, Van Rensburg. He was he saw World War One, World War Two, World War Three before they happened. And they asked him what what, when is this weird war World War Three gonna happen? This is back before World War One. He said, When the ice melts. That's what? It's now. 
Thank you, Jesus. All right, listen to this. Hallelujah. Riots killed two in Kenosha. Again, the, the Kenosha riots are continuing on. Uh, Tucker Carlson said Kenosha riots prove urban unrest is a class war masquerading as a race conflict. And that one there gets a – by now, I'm sorry, Tucker, but that one there gets this. You're good. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Obvious. I was on a totally different track. Although there are some people out there that probably don't know that by now. But I love Tucker Carlson. Okay, praise Jesus. All right, listen to this one. Hallelujah. Protesters shot in the head as Kenosha descends into a war zone, and they're, Trump is getting ready to send in once again federal troops to, to help bail them out and all that kind of stuff. And, and the parents of, of the of the kid, I mean, this is just, just a mess. It's just a mess. It is a mess, 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 mess. Do we, are we going to pull out of this tailspin? That's up to the father. And it's going to have everything in the world to do with whether or not, because he's got the the he's our father is the only one that can count the fullness of the Gentiles. Being brought in. All right? And he calls audibles. He does call audibles. We are in the last two minutes of the football game, but if, has you ever watched a football game that went into overtime? Because if you've ever watched a football game that got, went into overtime, and if you were tired and you needed to go to bed and it went into overtime, you might have been sitting there like me many times when I used to watch the game, which I don't anymore, but you know, going to, thinking to yourself, looking at your watch, going, man, I'm never going to get to bed. This game's never going to end. Guess what? Welcome to God's football game. Buckle up. All right, another headline. Hallelujah. Vehicles and stores on fire. Protesters with guns. Kenosha rioters defy curfew for the second night. This is going to keep on going, folks. You know why? Because it's the whole Antifa thing and the terrorist thing and all this. It's all, yeah. Okay. I hope hopefully you understand that by now. I'm pretty sure you do. Or else you probably wouldn't be a regular listener of the program. Praise God. All right, Seattle rioters tried to barricade. Seattle, it's still going on. Seattle rioters tried to barricade police in a building and burned them alive. Uh, Seattle, folks. Remember, remember, it was prophesied by a very trustworthy saint. The next major cataclysmic event is the Pacific Northwest megaquake. Buckle up, folks. That could be the thing that brings the country down. Oh, the, the the money behind the situation, trillions. Just, they spent trillions and trillions of dollars already. Trillions and trillions of additional money. I think it was like twenty five trillion more dollars or something like that, just on dealing with COVID. Yeah, that's fake money. <laughs> I had somebody at work. Uh, I could talk. I'm just gonna. I, I want to get Sister uh, Ka- Ka- uh, Cassie and, Ka- and Sister Cassie. We can go even beyond uh, the ten o'clock hour. T- 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 ten o'clock Eastern. We can go even a uh, half an hour beyond that if you want to. Praise Jesus. All right. So hang in there for me. All right. Massive explosion rocks Syria. Arab gas pipeline, and they think it's a terrorist attack. Could very well be. All kinds of things going on. There's blackout in Syria that was uh, on account of that. What's that all about? What about the threat? In 2012, from Sergei uh, Sergei Lavrov, Sergei Lavrov in Russia, who's still there, when he came out in 2012 and said any attack on Syria might might be met with a nuclear response. Well, they've been restraining themselves. Yeah, but who's setting these bombs? Hmm. Another headline: United States blacklists 24 Chinese companies for helping to build military islands in the self in the South China Sea. Hey, we blacklisted 24 companies. Wow! See that them fighting words. World War Three wins a war. All right, um, you know. Praise God. All right, next one. American Airlines to cut 19,000 jobs when federal aid expires in October. Wow. They want $25 billion to help them out. Is it going to happen? This is some scary stuff. And you know what? Can you see how many airlines, how many planes have had to turn around and go back because somebody didn't want to wear a mask? Turn around and go back. How many fights are breaking out? Almost every week there's another fight. It's unbelievable. Just had a fight here in Tampa. <laughs> Just had a fight here in Tampa in a, in a hardware store, in an Ace Hardware store. The guy went, got, the guy lit up on him and smacked. Him. It was just unbelievable. People are losing it. Uh, another headline: Devastating storm causes millions worth of damage, prompts state emergency in northern Italy. I just want you to get the sense. Keep in mind, all these things continue to happen. All the things that we have reported, gangbusters. Look, even the thing, the 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 the, the stuff that I was helping people understand about, you know, JFK and Lincoln and Trump and all that, and Bill Gates and all that, and putting all the pieces together, they all have the fingerprint of God on them. Our fathers are warning us. 
It's not just Satan, folks. Satan's under the control of our father, ultimately. Now, if our father pulls the protection back over a large area and lets Satan run wild, that's a different story. He can do that. Nazi Germany, I would hold up as an example. All right, 40,000 people affected, 4,000 houses damaged, and heavy monsoon rains hit wide swaths of northern uh, Thailand. All right, now listen to this. More JFK direct symbolism. This I just had to enter. I just on, on the main page of tribulation-now.org. I had to add this to that page that's talking about the JFK, Abraham Lincoln, Donald Trump symbolism. God sending a message. This particular headline is entitled from USA News: Two peas in a pod. Trump advisor calls Melania Melania uh, Melania Trump. Jackie Kennedy of her time. She redoes the all the, the, the Rose Garden and they're and they're like comparing her to Jack Onassis <laughs> Kennedy. Onassis and Kennedy, those two are blood those are two of the thirteen top Illuminati bloodlines, folks. And yes, God does sometimes use because they, they're sacrificial lambs. And then they kill their, they they eat their young. That's how they, how it works. Okay, but it's hard to explain to people that don't understand these things. It is complicated. It is. All right, listen to this. Interactive map, current California wildfires, folks. The entire state is on fire. This is way worse than last year. Another headline, smoke from California wildfires is now visible in Kansas. Another headline, University of Alabama reports 560 new COVID cases. Wait a minute. I thought it was over. Me thinks not. Another headline, Freak Lightning. Remember the, the reports I was giving you on the last program about the Freak Lightning and watching the TV series Impact, if you can get it? I think it's available on Netflix right now. Impact. Not Deep Impact. Just Impact. It's about a brown dwarf. Planet X. The Destroyer. The Destroyer of Nations, which is in the book of Jeremiah. Yep. Sign of the Son of Man. Matthew twenty four twenty nine. What's that? Planet X. Hallelujah. All right. Trump, China knows what I'm going to do if it invades Taiwan. Uh-oh. Calls for another one of these. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Another headline. Sweden announces high readiness action in the Baltic. What's that? High, net, high readiness action. High readiness action. Where's Sweden? Right on the right there, right up there by Russia. <laughs> Baltic Sea. In the Baltic Sea to in signal to Russia and NATO partners. Oh, my goodness gracious. Winds of war, winds of war. Look at this. Fox News reports, hard-living tyrant in a coma. Sister taking charge. Soko di diplomats claim in the latest round. So, again, Southern Korea intelligence agencies are saying, once again, that they have intelligence that indicates that Kim Jong-un is not well or could be in a coma. And then, of course, naturally, you have reports that come out. Counterintelligence says otherwise. All I can tell you, folks, is I have been following Kim Jong-un for a very, very long time. I do not believe that this is his face. I believe this is a body double, and they are simply grooming his sister to take charge. Because the reports about his sister being groomed, are un, they, they, they don't stop. Yes, there are counter intel reports that come out and say that Kim, Kim Jong-un is just fine. But then you see reports right beside it that say, like this one right here, Kim Jong-un's sister expands power in North Korea, according to report, which is true. Helter Skelter, look at her eyes. Helter Skelter, Helter Skelter. That's all. It's, it's Marie Antoinette. Look at her face. If you can't discern that face and know that you're dealing with, you know, okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And if you think she's not a terror, then pray for her. Hallelujah. All right. Mortgage delinquency soared to a decade high. Mortgage delinquencies, folks. This is sad. I believe a lot of these people may even be believers. But if you're a believer, that is not practicing righteousness, if you're living in willful and habitual sin, that could be bad. All right, listen to this. More than half of San Francisco storefronts are closed due to the pandemic. Mm, 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 mm. See, when I look at these headlines, I just don't know how it can recover. Pygmies in Africa being forced by law to wear masks so they can hunt with spears for food. Really? Really? Listen to this. The great inflation debate is heating up with trillions at stake. Listen to this. $20 trillion has been spent by the United States of America's government for, for just pandemic relief alone. $20 trillion. Hmm. By the way, that's from a financial news report. These are people that invest in stocks, that kind of thing. Yeah. 
Listen to this. Israeli Defense Force says security incident has unfolded along the Israeli-Lebanese border. Is that going to heat up? What's going to happen? We don't know. Greece vows to defend rights in the Mediterranean from Turkey, as Berlin warns. A little tiny sport can cause a great catastrophe. Yes, it can. We're on the edge. If the world is kind of like nitroglycerin, <laughs> nitroglycerin in fragile glass bottles sitting on the top of like, I don't know, like a, a big box of flint. <laughs> Okay, you know what I'm saying, folks? In a Conestoga wagon heading to Utah. <laughs> okay, praise God. Uh, more than 100,000 livestock perish in intense snowstorms in Patagonia. 70% of flock at risk. This goes on and on, folks. NASA, this is breaking is real news. NASA discovered dent in global magnetic field. Presage of Nibiru, says expert. Nibiru, Planet X. I tip my hat to breaking is real news, folks. They're on top of it. Eyewitness account says 20,000 unverified absentee ballots are counted in Detroit primary already. <sighs> what a mess we are heading into. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And on that note, let's go ahead and bring on Sister Casey uh, uh, Casey uh, Burke. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And here we go. Let me go ahead and look up. Her. Oh, there she is. She pressed one. That makes my job easier. Praise God. Let's blow the show far. Sister Casey Burt, thank you so much for calling us. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Praise God. You sound great. And, um, hey, it's easy. The way we work on the program is like an electronic ecclesia, like an electronic like an electronic church. And um, you can just, you know, think of yourself as standing in front of a podium and talking to the gathering of the saints or whatever. And, um, and I will grab my virtual folding chair. And get out of your hair and go sit in the back, and you can just go ahead and share what the Lord has put upon your heart to share with the listeners tonight. And thank you so much okay. for joining us. God bless you. You sound great. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, when you all contacted me, you had seen some of the things that I had written. I have a blog that's uh, um, online, and I've had, uh, I would say, dreams and visions since. I was a young child, so we chose seven of those to for me to share with you all tonight, and I'll do that, and John, just, you know, break in anywhere if you have a question. I want to try to get through, like, one complete dream or vision, and then if there's some questions or anything anyone wants to ask, you know, we're open for that. Oh, the we don't have one, a, I'm sorry, Sister we Casey, don't we that. don't have the capability to field questions on the program. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah, we're just broadcast only, straight out to the masses. <laughs> All right. So well, you're kind of like on then. Coast to Coast AM or Sid Roth. It's supernatural without a you know studio audience. <laughs> but anyway, it's all yours. But um, you have a whole okay. hour, so you'll have plenty of time. Go ahead. All right. God bless you. Thanks. God bless you. The first one um, was a, it was an event that I had. I called it an incredible experience. I was taken to heaven. And I'm going to read this to you the way I had experienced it. Last night, an incredible experience. I was sleeping, it seems, lightly all night and was somewhere between awareness and sleep. Suddenly, I was moving upward through the dark sky and catapulted into heaven. Immediately, I was standing before Jesus. He is so beautiful. I don't know any other way to describe him. There is nothing hidden in him. He is pure and holy. He is loving and approachable, and warmness radiated from him. I asked him, where's dad? Can I see him? Jesus turned his head and nodded in a direction, and I followed his gaze. In the distance was something like a white fire of light. It was huge, and the light overtook everything it shone on. The light was moving and breathing. It was alive, and it was God. It was so bright, I knew I could not keep my eyes open to see to get to him. 
And I asked Jesus, will you take me to him and place me at his feet? Immediately, I was at the feet of my father. My arms were wrapped around his mighty ankles, my head laying on his feet. His feet appeared like a glass substance to me with that white fire that was bright and light coming from them. I couldn't bear to look any longer, and I closed my eyes. His feet did not feel like glass, though, more like substance, but nothing I've ever felt before. I told God how much I loved him, and I began to cry. I told him I missed him so much, and at that moment, it felt as though my heart were torn in two, him to help me not to sin against him. I held on to his ankles, never wanting to let go never wanting to leave his presence. Everything clean and beautiful is within him, and I wanted to bask in that forever. I felt and saw in my brain this bright white light, like a flash of lightning only thicker and wider covering the inside of my head. Then I was back standing in front of Jesus, I asked him if I had to go back. He said it was my choice. I told him I didn't want to be wasted space on earth. And Jesus looked at me and asked, would you go back for one? I said, you mean like leaving the 99 to go in search of the one? And he said, yes. Would going back for just one be enough? I knew what he was saying to me. If I only brought one person safely into the household of God, would that be enough for me not to feel like a waste? I also knew Jesus was reminding me of the scripture of the shepherd who left the 99 to go find the one. I knew then that, yes, it would be enough. Even if only for one, it would be enough for me to go back. It was not nor ever would be about me. It is about all. To bring a lost brother or sister back home to God our Father, to see that they're spared an eternity of suffering in hell, and instead are gifted into a life eternal with God. I realized, too, that whatever I suffered by coming back and living in this dark world, it would be worth it. Jesus was still standing there, and he knew I had made my decision. I asked him if he could hold me, just for a moment. I stepped into his open arms and felt him cradle me like a child, his love so tender and so full for all of us. Then in a snap, I was back laying in my bed, wide awake, my husband sleeping soundly beside me. There were tears on my face still running from my eyes, and I knew everything I experienced was, I can't explain how God takes one spirit into heaven or even moves a whole person from one place to the next, but he does. I came away from this experience, or maybe a better explanation is, I cannot come away from this experience because I have a deeper understanding that in the eyes of God, we human beings are all related to each other. We are all brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God, and he is our father. My family just grew exponentially, and so has yours, if you can accept this. It is my deepest hope that my life in God will affect more than just one. However. That said, I am here even for the one lost. Jesus gave his life for all humankind. He was asking if I would give my life for just one. And my answer was yes, even for only one. He was testing my heart, I know. My overwhelming desire to be home with him versus his overwhelming desire that all should be saved. 
Such peace is upon me this morning, a feeling of graciousness and deep affection. If I could say it is settled in my heart and runs through my veins and seeps out through the pores of my skin, this is what I sense. I have been humbled by the Master. In his tender way, he has opened my heart yet again and laid it bare. That was taken to heaven. That's awesome. Do you want me to continue? Yeah, this, yeah, it's you have it. It's all yours. You can just go ahead and okay. roll right all through right. them. I, unless you want to just okay. have a conversation between, it's up to you. I, I'm happy to oblige you. Know, <laughs> however you feel led. Um, but I'll but go you, ahead you know, and it's all yours. It's your radio show. Okay. All, all right then. This next one, I, I'm not sure if I was physically there or whether it was a vision. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell. And then I labeled this one a vision of the persecution of a victorious church, and you'll understand it, and it is pretty amazing. This morning, I do not know whether I was there physically or whether I saw, mayhap both. I'm in a large church, and I have given a heavily anointed message to perhaps a 1,000 people. I'm sitting on a stool behind a pulpit, and I'm barefoot. This ground is holy, for God is present. I told them that we must surrender all of ourselves to God, that we can't hold anything back of ourselves. I reminded them of Aeneas and Sapphira, who, as recorded in Acts chapter 5, held back a portion of their gain, and they were each destroyed because of the deceit. There is deceit in holding any of ourselves back from God. In the same way, we too will be destroyed, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, when we do not surrender our whole heart. So I walk down to the congregation floor, and I say, My father wishes to gather all of you unto him, like a hen with her baby chicks. Come and rest. Under his mighty wings, I say, come. And the people in the congregation start coming up to where I stand barefoot. One holds out her arm. And I see that about three inches from the elbow has been amputated. I reach out and unravel the sleeve of her shirt and take hold of the stump of her arm. I reach for her other arm, which is whole, and place them against each other. And I begin to trace from the amputated arm a line matching her whole arm and fingers. And then they appear on the amputated arm. And now both arms are whole. Next, an older woman with these, like, roomy-looking eyes. I wet my fingertips with my own spit, just like Jesus did, and I rub them across her eyelids. When she opened her eyes, they were clear. And she touched her face and she cried out with joy. There were so many that our father touched. Many dropped to their knees and repented before God. There were tears and crying and sobbing. As we were all faced with our own wretchedness, yet healing came on so many levels. Suddenly, a man was at the front of the sanctuary, and he was saying terrible things, blaspheming God, blaspheming God, words I cannot and will not repeat. I told him to silence his tongue and repent, or surely the Lord would deal with him this very night. Two men from the church led him out of the sanctuary. As the evening began to close and the people started leaving, That man came in the sanctuary with a machine gun. I was walking towards the pews when I saw him. My husband and four other men were behind me, walking with me. In this vision, I turned to the men, my husband and the men that were with him, and I told them, turn your backs. I saw that they were looking at the man with the gun, and I said, obey God, our Father. And they all turned their backs 
to the man with the machine gun, and I turned my back as well. Then a loud cacophony of sound erupted from that machine gun, but nothing touched us. It sounded as if the the bullets were bouncing off something. Then suddenly a loud crack of what appeared to be lightning came down through the roof of the sanctuary. Our backs were still turned, but the light and the sound was overwhelming. Then silence, and I turned around and see that right behind me stood seven messengers of God who appeared to be in full armor with shield and swords. They were tightly standing side by side and seemed to me to be ten foot tall. There was a light around them like a golden glow. I moved a step in between them, the ones to my right, moved two steps over to allow me through. The man with the machine gun lay dead on the sanctuary floor. I looked up and I saw that a hole had been torn through the roof and the ceiling of the sanctuary where that lightning bolt came through. I began to cry and I turned to one of the messengers and I asked, was this man's heart lost or just his mind? And the messenger replied, both. My heart was broken for the dead man. He would be in eternal suffering, and that rent my heart in two. And I said thank you to the messenger. Then I saw all the bullets lined up on the floor in front of the messengers. They were flattened as if an anvil had smashed each one, all laying in a row. And I realized those bullets hit the shields of the messengers protecting all of us standing behind them. My husband and the other men were still standing behind the messengers, and I looked up through that hole in the ceiling and roof. And I spoke, Father, I know this hurts you. And I began sobbing again. Gently, a white light came through that hole in the ceiling, and it shone around me, and I felt a huge teardrop land on my head our father and I were crying together for it is his heart that none should perish yet it is we who make that decision whether to believe in him who sent his son and the spirit of truth to us when the teardrop from heaven landed on my head suddenly I was surrounded by these seven messengers of God who all dropped to a knee around me. Through the light, we all heard the voice from heaven, and he spoke, This is my daughter, whom I love. Then that light receded, and my brothers, the messengers, seemed to turn into white light and went up through that same hole in the ceiling and were gone. The men from the church stood staring at me, And I said, that man was lost to the adversary. One of the men started to kneel before me, and I said, no, don't do that. Messengers were not kneeling to me. They knelt at the teardrop of God. I am only one of many the Father has sent. One of the men asked if I knew what God was going to do before all of this happened, and I said, no. I only know he told me to turn my back, so I did. It is not mine to question our father, only to obey him when he speaks. The last thing I remember was saying to the senior pastor, you have insurance for that, right? Pointing to the hole in the ceiling. I was worried about the damage, but shouldn't have been. In the whole scheme of things, what did a roof matter after all? As I sat on my patio this morning, the Holy Spirit of truth began speaking scripture to me. He was speaking the words Yeshua said in John 14, 10, 17, and I'll read that to you. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. 
but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. For very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is a spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. We who believe in Yeshua, who trust that his word is true, must walk in his power, in his courage and strength. This vision is for the body of Yeshua. We are extensions and heirs of the king. That was a powerful one for me. Um, Sometimes I'm so afraid of an issue of pride entering into my heart that I fear to obey God in doing something supernatural. And I... I have to work very hard at that to maintain a humble heart so that I can be a vessel that God would choose to use. This next one is the audible voice of God. It is one of many times I've actually heard the voice of God and not inside my head, but outside my head as if a person were standing right next to me. One night in 2003, I woke up to the audible voice of God. It was right outside my left ear, not a voice inside my head, but his voice outside my head. He said, my people do not know how to pray. That was it. I woke up trembling. I was in tears. My heart was torn in two. I was crying out to God for the next three hours, pleading with him to tell me what we were supposed to do. How did he want us to pray? Around 4 a.m., I heard the Holy Spirit answer this plea, and he said, Second Chronicles 7, 14, 15. Now, back in 2003... There wasn't a whole lot of talk about Second Chronicles seven fourteen fifteen like there is today. I got up shaking and I turned on the light and reached for my Bible and as I turned to the scripture, my heart broke again. It was so clear to me. This is what I read and understood the Holy Spirit to be saying. If my people who are called by my name that's those who have given their lives completely to God, humble themselves, meaning remove every arrogant, self-serving thought and action, pray, meaning to communicate with and to God, seek my face, meaning to strive, long for, desire to know him above all things, turn from their wicked ways, That means to lay down every thought, action, or deed that does not line up with the nature and character of God. Then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land, meaning God will forget your unrighteous acts and ugly behavior and erase it from his memory. And he will reestablish things that have gone wrong because of your sin. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer made in this place, meaning God will now make a point 
to watch over you and listen to your prayers. After reading this, I understood my own wretched condition. I had not followed these principles before coming to God. I had not humbled myself before him. When I prayed, I did not have an understanding of how unclean I was. I was not seeking him alone and setting my own agendas aside. I had not turned from every wicked way within me. There were still judgmental thoughts, parts of my own personality that were not in right standing with God. You know, it's a very humbling thing when God cares enough, loves enough, to point out why we do not have an intimate relationship with him, why we're not healed when we pray, why our lives spin in turmoil. Those things I read in Second Chronicles, those are the reasons, and he said so. I am in awe to hear his holy, audible voice. And it makes me long for him all the more. I guess the reason I've shared this, and that is if you're reading my blog or listening to me right now, you know it's centered on God, his son Yeshua, and his Holy Spirit. And I want you to have all of him. And this is the answer to everything right here in his word. So wake up, open your ears, In your heart, he is here among us, and he wants an intimate relationship with you, not a distant one. God wants intimacy. And he does. That's what he wants with us. He loves us, and he wants us to love him. This next one was a supernatural experience, and I wanted to share it because I think we need to know that God still does these things, and I called it God Moved a Truck. I write mostly about dreams that I've had or visions. Sometimes I'm inspired by the Holy Spirit to write regarding passages of Scripture and how they apply to our world today, but this writing is none of that. While I was living in Kentucky, I experienced something I will never forget. I was driving up a single-lane road that led to the turnoff to our subdivision. And this road was narrow, and it came to a peak, a hilltop, and then sloped right back down again. At that peak of hilltop, the road turned slightly. I remember often thinking that I never knew what was on the other side of that peak in the road because you can't see any oncoming traffic until you either reach that peak or oncoming traffic is crossing over the peak. I'd spent a good portion of my day working at church and was on my way home. It was probably around 3 in the afternoon in late fall. The weather was cool, bordering on cold. I was driving up that single lane road within maybe five feet of the peak at the top when suddenly a huge dump truck came barreling over the top, half of the truck on my side of the road. No, Father. The truck was within inches of the front of my car when it was suddenly lifted up and moved over to the lane on the road it should have been in. In the time it took to take a breath, sudden death was changed to absolute life. God not only heard me, he responded faster than any measure of time I can think of being measured. My hands were gripping the steering wheel of the car. My eyes followed what was empty space in front of me and beyond where there had just been a huge dump truck on my side of the road coming straight at me. It was merely inches away from crushing me. Then the truck was lifted up and over to the other side of the road. The truck continued on down the road. I slowed to a stop. Spared my life. Why me? Was it because I called his name without even thinking about it? Because he is my first thought? I really don't know. Some of you might know who John Lauren Sanford is. 
author, amazing, godly man. He once told me in an email that he sent me that he thought God was going to use me in some way to make an impact for his kingdom. I had not had this experience yet when we communicated. To be completely honest, I'm not sure what God wants me to do. I still suffer with migraines, back and neck pain. Some days it's so bad I ask God to please bring me home to him. I don't want to be wasted space on this earth. But often that's just how I feel. I think probably many of us do. So I prayed, Father, if you keep saving me from death for some reason, and you have done it many times, would you show me what you want me to do? I'm putting a fleece before you in writing for all to see. Tell me what you want. Let me finish out whatever mission you have planned for me. That experience, I think it's it's meaningful for everybody because we all want to know why God keeps sparing our lives. What is it that he wants us to do while we're here on this journey? And the only answer I have for that is to just to keep seeking him and look for every opportunity to share who he is, what he does. This next one is um, it's a dream about being foreordained. And, you know, there's always a lot of talk about uh, whether people are predestined or foreordained. So this dream kind of cleared that up for me, and I, and I hope it will for you too. Uh, I had a dream two nights ago. I was in an outdoor space, and I was talking with a man. In the dream, he said, God is doing something with his chosen and elect. And I looked at that person to consider his statement when the words, the chosen are God's elect, came forth from both of our mouths speaking as one person. The words, the chosen and elect are foreordained by God. Again, we spoke the words at the same time. As I stood there in the dream, I spoke these words, the rest are prayed in, and then I woke up. I understood that people are chosen by God for supernatural purposes of his choosing for their lives. As I prayed over this, foreordained would mean they were chosen of God as his elect prior to birth. Biblical history of this would be like Samuel, Samson, John the Baptist, of course Jesus, and even women like Mary, Deborah, and others. This would include the prophets and the seers in scripture and beyond to our present day and into the future. The other part of foreordained would mean that they may not necessarily have recognition by their present day religious authorities to be ordained into God's mission field because God himself has already ordained them. God is still in the business of choosing people before they are even born to do his work and his will. This choosing before birth and in Elizabeth's and Sarah's case prior to conception has staggering implications. If we comprehend we have a limitless God, his ability to create and choose is well within his abilities. God has the ultimate foreknowledge. As I considered this dream, I realized our Father is a very strategic in placing his chosen elect into each generation. Then I remembered speaking with a Hasidic rabbi and a Reformed rabbi while attending university studies. Both had this to say. There are not less than 36 righteous persons in the world in each generation who receive the Shekinah, the divine presence of God. The notion of the 36 righteous ones appears in the Talmud 
the oral tradition of Judaism. It says, they come at times of great peril, called out of their anonymity and humility by the necessity to save the world because they can, because we need them. Hasidic, Orthodox, and Reformed Judaism, according to the Talmud, believe there are 36 of these righteous ones in every 30-year generation. Personally, I believe that if these are the chosen elect, that number is far smaller than I had hoped. That said, if these 36 are the same persons as his chosen elect are described, they are his spiritual warriors on earth. They will be very powerful for his kingdom. I believe they do and will lead and pray in the lost. These pray for salvation of the world. Salvation is the only way to save those in this world. I believe they have sacrificed their lives and their own agenda to serve God. That said, these chosen are not flawless. They battle with their own sin, as we all do. That was a little meaty, a little something to chew on. What I hope will be, um, I want it to be encouraging. I was in Orlando, Florida at a conference for women about a year after the warrior dream. That's a different dream. I have to look on my blog to read that one. I had been invited by a co-worker, Kay. She was especially strong and faithful Christian. We had been experiencing fairly intense spiritual warfare in the human resources department office where we worked. There was just an onslaught of demonic activity going on in three or more highly placed individuals at that time. The conference for me was a welcome respite to be refreshed by the Holy Spirit. That evening, we were staying at a motel, and as I was drifting off to sleep, my mind seemed to be rushing from one thing to the next, and I fell asleep face down on my bed. I was exhausted and troubled, yet at the same time trying to turn this chaos over to God. As I slept, I began to feel movement, the rhythm of a heartbeat, steady, A huge heart was beating beneath me, as if an entire mountain were moving back and forth in that rhythm. I could feel and hear the intake of air into lungs, into a massive chest, passing through nostrils I could not see. I opened my eyes and I saw I was no longer on my bed, but I lay on the chest of my Holy Father the one who created the universe and all that was in it. I lifted my head, but I couldn't see his face. I looked on both sides of myself and could see no end for miles and miles, it seemed. Only a massive chest with a huge and holy heart beating, the light touch of his hand on my shoulder. There was peace undeniable peace and I lay my head back down and I slept in the safety of my father I am and I was humbled that the God of all things would come to comfort a lowly daughter like me there would be another night another time that he would come to me and show me this universe that fits in the span of his hand. I long for his visits. Sometimes I will be called to fight and will return bruised and bleeding, other times only to watch and learn, bringing those lessons back for other warriors to learn. But for now, I rested. And I remember that my father's heart beats for all of those who love him. He knows right where we are. And he knows right when we need him. 
this, I'm going to read the last one now. It's called The Opened Heart. It was a vision. It was Wednesday evening. We drove home from church. I was praying on emptying myself to God. And I asked Jesus again to conquer me, to conquer my heart. Immediately, I was catapulted into a very powerful vision. And this is what I saw. I saw my heart opened in half, each side laying flat, my heart completely open. I saw my blood pumping through the arteries, vessels, and chambers, even though it was opened up like this. Then suddenly the blood was gone, and in its place was something that looked like spring water. It was very clear and clean, and it bubbled up like a rushing stream. I saw this was the living waters the river of life that was now pumping through my heart. The vessels and the chambers were filled with this living water, and it was Jesus himself overflowing every tissue and cell there. This living water moved through my arms and legs, my whole body, and through out of the top of my head. All of my own blood was gone, and this living water flowed throughout my entire body now. And I began to shake, and I came back to where I was sitting in the seat of the car. And my face was wet with tears, and I was crying out to God. Perhaps it is in the asking, in the intense desire for Jesus to conquer our hearts, our very flesh, that his living water enters in, and he does, in fact, reside within us. He is life and movement holy and pure, taking in and taking over all that we were to become what he wills. After all these years, I am still so head over heels in love with God. I wish I could find the words, you know, really good words that could describe what I sense when the Lord pulls me away from this world and into his realm. I don't have those words. What I experience spiritually, physically, and emotionally, well, it's all just tripping all over each other in wonder. It still is. So that, those are the seven dreams, visions, events. I probably have over a hundred. I hope can it's you, encouraging. Yes. Can you share with everybody um, where they can find your blog? Oh, um, geez. I don't even have have that in front of me. <laughs> it's on WordPress. Let me let me go find it for you. Okay. I, um, it is popping up now. Slow, slow, slow. I think I have it down as um, dreams, visions, and prophetic writing. So it's under prophetic dreams and prophetic, yeah, prophetic. It's dreams, visions, and prophetic writings. If you blog that, you'll probably, if you, you know, look for it that way. I don't have the domain name right in front of me. I'm sorry about that. I think you might have it. Um, Here we go, propheticdreams.home.blog. That should take you there. Let's see if I can find it here, propheticdreams. uh, Oh. Dot home dot blog. All right, let me give that a try. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, praise right. God. That's awesome. Yeah, um, propheticdreams.home.blog. Prophetic, I yes. didn't even, okay, that's cool. Okay, propheticdreams.home.blog.blog. Uh, praise God. And I'm on it right now. And this is great. This is great. Thank you so much, Casey, for joining us tonight. This is a blessing. Thank you. Praise God. Would you, um, you know, would, would you be um, uh, led to uh, close with a prayer for us tonight? I'd be happy to. I'd be blessed to. Awesome. Father, we just come to you tonight. Lord God, 
we do have a, a chaotic world. And Father, sometimes it feels so very, very dark. But I know that your light breaks forth through all of that. And that if we trust you, that you will come forth in our own lives. Father, we all we ask that you would take charge of our lives and take control of our hearts and our minds, Father, and fill us with your thoughts. Let us know what you're thinking. Father, we'd love to know what you're doing right now, what you're thinking right now, what you're planning right now. I want to know. I want to know everything about you, Father. I think we all do. So, Father, I pray that you would come to us during the night when we sleep and speak to us. And during the day when we walk and we work, talk to us. Show us the path that you want us to be on, Father, and help us stay on it. Forgive us, Father, for the things that we do wrong, the things that we think and say that aren't right. Lord, set us free from those things. Help us to be the sons and daughters that you want us to be. And we ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Folks, you got to check this out. Propheticdreams.home.blog. This, this, this website has a ton of stuff that you're going to want to check out. Um, I'm just here to tell you, I, I, I'll, I, you know, I, oh my gosh, praise Jesus. This is amazing. Um, false, false, uh, uh, the falseness of on demand prophetic, um, words. Uh, we are living in the age of deception, a warning, white light, a celebration of Christ. Uh, I just, there's a bunch of stuff here about the, uh, end times, a warning of great uh, you know, um, uh, a future cat- catastrophic event, um, uh, fire, uh, a great a fiery chasm. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Praise God. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, um, Sister Casey. This is great. Again, that's propheticdreams.home.blog. And I'm sure if you do some uh, digging around on that website, um, and then, of course, she has her e- email there right, right on the top of the page. Uh, so if you wanted to email her, obviously, she, she will respond. And uh, but there's a yeah. lot of really good prophetic information here uh, that is very relevant to the days that we live in right now, which I was unaware of. So praise God for that, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. Thank you for thank you for having me. What a blessing, and thank you all for joining us again. It's uh, Wednesday night, so we'll see you at the Friday night prayer vigil, 8 p.m. Lord willing. Keep those prayers coming both back and forth. Pray for each other. Weird days we live in right now. Thank you, Jesus. We're getting closer every moment. Be encouraged. See you all Friday night. God bless you all.